In this EV architecture mini course, we'll present a set of simple guidelines and architectural models for each EV variant. The di diagrammatic representations depict the major components and energy flows in an EV. It's important to recognize that each major component is a subsystem composed of a variety of smaller components. Each of the major architectural components is represented in a signature color. Charging functionality, always shown in orange, is depicted as if it were on board the vehicle, but often the battery charger is external to the vehicle. The battery component, shown in yellow, varies dramatically in capacity and in structure. Control electronics, always shown in gray, encompasses a broad array of functions that include power conditioning, motor control, and the control of regenerative braking. The electric motor, shown in blue, has its own control functionality. It can serve as a generator, also shown in blue, in blue during regen. The regenerative braking component, shown in green, senses when power flowing to the motor stops and initiates transformation of kinetic energy into electrical energy to recharge the battery. When an internal combustion engine is part of the EV architecture, it is shown stylistically as an inline four-cylinder motor. Now that we've established some basic conventions, it's time to look at each architecture. For a BEV, electric energy is provided from the grid, period. No fossil fuels, no ice, no emissions. The schematic on the screen illustrates the architecture of the battery electric vehicle. Electricity from the grid passes through a charger, shown in orange, and charges the battery in yellow. Energy stored in the battery is passed to control electronics, called a power electronic driver in gray in this schematic, to moderate the energy transfer to the electric motor in blue. A regenerative braking component in green translates kinetic energy from the car's motion into electricity to return energy back to the battery. Regen, as it's called, is invoked only when power to the electric motor is discontinued. This occurs when the driver takes his or her foot off the accelerator. The most notable BEVs are the Nissan LEAF, the Tesla Model S, the Ford Focus Electric, the BMW i3 without range extender, and the Mitsubishi EV, with others such as the Volkswagen e-Golf in their first year of uh, int introduction on the market, and still more on the way. The PHEV series architecture uses an internal combustion engine, but not to drive the wheels of the car. Rather, an ICE is used to drive a generator that charges the battery. The battery can also be charged from the grid using a battery charger. Power from the battery is passed through control electronics to an electric motor, which of course drives the, the wheels. Like its counterpart in a BEV, the regenerative braking component translates the kinetic energy of the car into electricity to recharge the battery. Unlike the PHEV series hybrid, the PHEV parallel variant allows the internal combustion engine to directly drive the wheels, but also provides an electric motor that can drive the wheels as well. The electric motor may, may be implemented at very low speeds and it will be discontinued when the battery is depleted. At that time, the internal combustion engine will take over. The ICE operates in a manner similar to a conventional vehicle and does not act to recharge the PHEV battery. The electric motor is driven by the battery that is charged from the grid via a charger, allowing the electric motor to share drive responsibilities with the internal combustion engine. Again, a regenerative braking component translates the kinetic energy of the car's motion into electricity to recharge the battery. The PHEV series parallel architecture uses an internal combustion engine that can both drive the wheels of the car and also turn a generator to charge the battery. The key difference is this architecture 
is that the ICE is involved in charging the battery by driving a generator and transmitting its power directly to the drive wheels through special gearing shown in the middle right of the figure. Like the series arrangement, the battery, shown in yellow, is also charged from the grid using a battery charger. Power from the battery is passed through control electronics to an electric motor. A regenerative braking component, shown in green, translates kinetic energy of the car's motion into electricity to recharge the battery. Unlike PHEVs, the fuel cell electric vehicle, the FCEV, does not charge its battery from the grid. Rather, it makes use of a fuel cell that initiates an electrochemical reaction with a fuel, in most cases hydrogen, to create electricity that charges the battery. The fuel cell can also provide direct power to the electric motor. An FCEV has one or more onboard fuel tanks that can contain pressurized hydrogen. The vehicle must be refueled at a hydrogen refueling station, an infrastructure element that today is quite rare. We present an entire EVU mini course on the FCEV, so we'll postpone further discussion of this architecture until you take that course. Let's summarize what we've discussed. A limited number of major system components are found in all variants. Their organization and relationship to one another are what distinguish the architectural variants. Before we complete our course sequence on EVs and on EV architectures, let's take a look at a example production vehicles that fall into each of these architectural categories.